Good evening and welcome to Studio A at WKAR-TV. I'm Jeannie Crook. And I'm Matt Ottinger. As you probably know by now, the way that you see television is about to change. TV stations across the country are in the process of switching to digital television. And for you, that means better pictures, sound, and more choices. But it also means hooking up new equipment and learning a whole new language of digital terms. And that's left many people confused and concerned. And that's why we're here tonight. We're going to try to answer some of your questions and guide you through the steps you need to take to get dig digital television. Over the next hour, we'll talk with experts about digital TV and give demonstrations on how to hook up the equipment. And since this is really a big do-it-yourself project, we'll check in with Kevin O'Connor and Norm Abram from This Old House. Let's make sure if we're clear on one thing. If you get your television signal from a cable company or a satellite provider, then you're all set for the digital conversion. Those companies will still provide you with the same channels you receive now. And there's nothing else you need to do. That's right. But if you use an antenna, either on your roof or on top of your TV, then we're here for you tonight. And remember, think about every TV set in your home. You may use, like I do, cable or satellite for your main televisions, but you might have an antenna for one in a bedroom or in a kitchen or in a basement. And all of your sets need to be ready for digital TV. The people you see behind us are here to answer your specific questions. And you can call one of them at 517-355-2323 and they'll do your best to give you an answer. They'll be here all evening and we'll stay following the end of our program to keep taking your calls. But first, let's take a step back and look at how we got to this point. And to help us out, we asked WKAR's digital guy to explain why we're here switching from analog TV to digital. The answer to that requires a bit of a science lesson. Broadcasting a TV signal uses magnetic waves sent out on an assigned frequency or channel. All of the channels together make up the broadcast spectrum. Digital TV uses less of the spectrum than analog TV does. So by switching to digital, we can free up more broadcasting space. The space that becomes available can be used for public safety and wireless services. Plus, digital TV actually gives you better pictures and sound. So you're getting better quality TV and more space for other uses. That space will be freed up when analog broadcasting ends on February 17, 2009. And let's talk more about those airwaves. The decision to switch from analog to digital television was made by the federal government. To give us a better understanding of that decision, we're joined by Johannes Bauer of the Department of Telecommunication, Information Studies and Media here at Michigan State University. Johannes, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. And uh, let's start, because we were talking before, about some of the history. This goes back a lot further than a lot of people realize. Yes, in fact, this goes back all the way to the 1970s. In the 1970s, Japan tried to come up with a technology that was superior to the existing color TV system, which actually was the same as the United States uses and used at that point in time. Japan wanted to propose it on a global scale, but the Europeans did not want to go along with it, and the Americans finally decided also to go their own way. And so in a long process, over several decades, the Federal Communications Commission and Congress decided to develop an own platform for the United States. The delay in this fact, in this context actually used uh, was useful for the United States because at that point in time digital technology was available and the United States could come up with a superior technology to the Japanese and the European technology. Historically it sounds a lot like the transition from black and white to color but we don't need to go that yeah, far exactly. back today I don't right. think so. Why now and, and what happens now? Well Congress in uh, 1996 envisioned a 10 year transition to digital TV and it went much slower than anticipated. So by 2004, 2005 it became clear that the 2006 deadline that had been envisioned would not be met. <laughs> Essentially, there was a chicken and egg problem involved. The manufacturers did not want to produce uh, the new sets unless broadcasters were broadcasting in digital format. Broadcasters, on the other hand, didn't want to broadcast until the TV sets were in place. And Congress tried to synchronize the expectations of those players uh, and set uh, a deadline for everybody to work toward, and this is why February 2009 came along. And, and here we are, right at that right. deadline. What happens now to the frequencies that were used by the airwaves and now being, uh, less of them being used with the digital, what happens to the rest of it? Well, the frequencies that will be released are actually a very valuable part of the spectrum. They're called the prime real estate of wireless communications. Some of it will be used to offer new digital data communication services, uh, mobile TV services, 
um, broadband wireless access to rural areas, for example. Other uh, parts of it will be used for emergency services and rescue services, all, all very valuable services to society. So it's a very important change that we're really making. And exactly. where does the U.S. compare with other countries in this changeover? The U.S. is in the leading uh, group of seven countries. Actually, we will be number seven by the time we have completed the transition. The Netherlands was first in 2006. Uh, a few other European countries followed, and the United States will be number seven. All right. A lot more I could be asking you, but we've got a lot more to cover as well. Johannes, thank you for Pleasure joining us. Pleasure to be us. here. So television sh stations across the country are going to end analog broadcasting on February 17th. What about right here at WKAR, Jeannie? Well, Matt, like some stations, WKAR will actually turn off our analog signal sooner than that. And in fact, we will end analog broadcasting on Thursday, January 13th. So after that date, you'll either need a digital television set or a digital converter box to see WKAR. Joining us now to talk about this is State Kent Whelan, station manager for WKAR. Kent. The question I hear most uh, that's not a technical question, but mm -hmm. just a curiosity question, is why are we doing this a month or five weeks ahead of the other stations in, in the area? Well, it's a good question because a lot of people know that February 18th is the date at which it's all yeah. gone, but WKAR is going early. There is a very good reason for that, and it is, frankly, a financial consideration. Uh, if we would have waited, because WKAR has to prepare a transfer transmitter for digital broadcasting. Now we've been doing that, but we're changing frequencies. The FCC has made us change frequencies. Now the viewers will still see us at 23.1, but what we're doing is preparing our transmitter early so that on the date of February 18th, we will invisibly um, change frequencies. The viewers won't notice that, but we will be positioned to do it. And frankly, we had to make a choice. We could either go early or we could go on the date. But by going early, we are saving tens of thousands of dollars. We are member supported. Yep. We owe it to our constituency to do the most fiscally responsible thing. And that's why we're doing it. Tens of thousands of dollars. And that's a very big deal for us. If viewers watch um, WKAR and they're digital now, does that mean that they will still be able to see other local stations between January 13th and February 18th? That's right. Uh, viewers will be able to see the other analog uh, stations in our market, but WKAR will not be there. We're going a little earlier than the others. Okay, and if they don't do this until February 18th, what does that mean? If the viewers... If the viewer doesn't get their uh, transmission switched over before mm -hmm. the 18th, well, that what means happens that in that month? WKAR will not be available to them. Uh, the other analog stations will be there through February 18th, but WKAR will not be. One night from tonight, we are ceasing. Okay, well, thanks, Kent.